Hello, welcome to the Indian Century. The history of Indian murals started in ancient and early medieval times from the 2nd century BC to around 8th century AD. The earliest of the Kerala murals were located by the side of a rock and a shrine at Tirunandikara, presently in the Kanyakumari district of Tamil Nadu, way back in the 8th century. During ancient times, royal palaces, houses of noblemen and temples were all decorated with mural paintings. The word mural is derived from the Latin term murus, which means wall, that is a form of painting which is purely three-dimensional. Traditional murals use panchavarna, means five colors, which are exclusively red, yellow, green, black and white, white being the color of the wall itself. Colors are prepared from vegetable and mineral pigments. The characters in the murals are colored according to their characteristics explained in the Hindu mythological scriptures. Spiritual, divine and dharmic characters, Sattvika, are depicted in shades of green, whereas those who are influenced towards power and materialistic wealth, the Rajasik, are painted in shades of red to golden yellow. Evil, wicked and mean characters, Tamasik, are generally painted in white or black. Every mural is a testament to the depth of dedication the artists have to their art. Mural art developed in Kerala due to the significant influence of ancient Dravidian rituals like Kalamirita and Padayani. Kerala murals stand for natural beauty, elegance, simplicity and devotion to the god. The preparation of wall is an elaborate process and is carried out through three stages. The brick wall is plastered with a mixture of lime and clean sand in the ratio 1 is to 2. This mixture is ground well to a paste form and the juice of the plant Onyal Valli or Chunnambu Valli also known as Sisis Glauca is added to it. Doing this can increase the viscosity of the liquid. The first plastering is a rough one and the plastered wall is allowed to get dry for one day. Thereafter, the process is repeated so that the thickness increases. In the second round, cotton is also added. Cotton fibers impart gleaming whiteness to the surface and give better texture to the base. The third layer of cotton is done with a mixture of quick lime and the juice of very tender coconut. The application on the wall is done both lengthwise and breadthwise repeatedly for about 25 to 30 times. The wall will gradually attain a bright white background which can also serve as a white pigment for murals. The yellow stones are washed thoroughly and ground maximum manually on a grinding stone. Then they are mixed with water and decanted slowly. This process is repeated to make sure that there is no unwanted residue along with the pigment. Thereafter, the solution is kept undisturbed for sufficient time to get it separated as water on the top and pigment at the bottom. Red ochre contains 95% of ferric oxide. On completing the process, the prepared pigment powders are separately stored. The quality of the color depends on the selection of the stone, accuracy, proper cleaning and decantation process. Yellow color has been universally used in all types of mural from the earliest times. The raw material for green pigment is extracted from the leaves of indigo, indigo ferra tinctoria or nila amari. Its leaves are squeezed and squashed well to get the greenish blue color juice which is dried up for use. The black pigment is produced by burning the cotton wicks immersed in gingerly oil and collecting the smoke of the flame in an earthen pot kept upside down over the flame. The lamp black or the carbon deposited on the surface is scratched out slowly and kept for use. The colors are thus prepared by adding enough quantity of water and neem glue before the painting is done. 
Neem glue is obtained from neem bark by making a cut on the stem which is left unused for a week. The glue gets secreted from the stem. Pull or Kundali pull, known as arrow grass or elephant grass, is used for making fine brushes for painting. These grow abundantly on the river banks. Small bundles of grass are softened by dipping for some time in milk and water. The soft ones are selected and cut to the required length, and the bundle is tied up with a thread. Then the bunch is inserted into a pointed hollow part of a bamboo stick. The number of grass ends will decide the size of the brush. Black outline and patches of black or dark tone are used to indicate hair, eyes, outline of figures and objects in Indian mural paintings. This can be done only with the use of EM puller brushes. Presently, mural paintings are done not only on walls but on bison panels too. Bison panel is a cement bonded particle board made out of 62% cement and 28% wood. Due to the unique manufacturing process, this panel acquires the strength and durability of cement and the workability of wood. Most shots of this video are captured from Vastavidya Gurugulam located in Patramthitta district of Kerala. They aim to take up activities aimed at promoting public awareness about traditional architecture 
and take up directly and indirectly programs and initiatives that will increase the spread of cultural activities in the region. This temple mural painting was painted several centuries ago. The scene visualizes a fine picture of Shiva and Parvati sitting beneath the Kalpa Vriksha, a powerful picture of Durga vanquishing the buffalo-headed demon Mahisha, the pranks of Krishna who is the divine boy of Ambadi, a picture of a Yakshi, the dangerous seductress of legends, Rama Patabhishegam or the coronation of Sri Rama, Shiva Tandava and a picture of Shasta astride a horse. Thanks for watching. To watch more videos related to the centuries old cultural paintings of India, subscribe my channel.